This is the second lecture in the Gretel Boot Camp. We are going to work on importing data. But before we do that, I want to cover just a little bit about variables in Gretel. Okay, in Gretel, there are several different types of variables. For the purposes of these lectures, we're going to deal with one specific type. It's called a series. Now, a series in Gretel is, well, your data. So when you bring in data, Gretel thinks of it as a series. Now, that series may have observation labels. So it's going to have just a list of observations, and then there might be labels attached to that. Now, depending on what those labels mean, depends on what kind of data it is. So for example, let's say we have undated data. So it doesn't have any dates. It's just taken from one instant in time across a number of individuals. Now, we may have data labels telling me that I have different individuals. I may not have any data labels at all. All right, it's just a whole bunch of data. It's at one point in time, and it's different individuals, not different, different observations, not different points in, uh, in time. We're going to call that cross-section. If, on the other hand, those data labels have dates, and so it means a series or a succession of observations over time, we're going to call that a cross-section. Now, there's one further type of data called panel data, which has both an individual component, so different individuals, observed over time. So it's like a two-dimensional data set almost. We're not going to deal with those at all in these lectures. We're just going to talk about time series and cross-section data, and in this case, just about how to import it into your program. The next section we're going to talk about is preparing your data. There's a few key things to do to make your data get into Gretel very nicely. Generally, the way we do this is doing it with Microsoft Excel. It's not the only way. Gretel is really, really smart and can deal with lots of different file types. You can even create your own data set right in Gretel. But for the purposes of these lectures, we're going to focus on taking our data from Microsoft Excel and bringing it into Gretel. Now, Gretel is pretty smart and is able to bring in Excel files, both the old XLS files and the XLSX files, as well as a few other formats that Excel can produce. But Excel, on the other hand, can sometimes, well, throw a little wobbly as far as bringing things in. So we're going to talk a little bit about the proper way to format your data in Excel such that it works very well into Gretel. So here we have some sample data. Uh, my data is in Excel, and what I did was I used the um, FRED add-in that's supplied by the St. Louis Fed um, to access data from the Federal Reserve Economic Database directly in Excel. And it gives me the data in a nice format. It tells me the, date, the data code in FRED and the periodicity and all kinds of cool metadata about this data series, which happens to be the Fed funds rate. But there's a few problems with it when it comes down. First of all, I've fixed this already, but it will put here the word value. Now, Gretel needs at the top of any series of data, and your series must be in columns, a name. All right, And that's the name that it uses to refer to that data. And so there's a, a few rules that you need to follow as far as naming in order to make it a little bit easier on yourself. First of all, the name must begin with a letter. All right, no numbers or special characters or anything like that. Number two, the name should not include any spaces. And number three, don't use any special characters besides an underscore. Uh, so if you need a space in your data, right, you can use the underscore character to stand in as a space. Now, Gretel is pretty smart, and if you violate any of those rules, it will oftentimes compensate for you. But it just makes it easier if you don't. So right now, I've renamed this data FedF, or Fed Funds, because this is the federal funds rate. OK, the next problem with this data is when I pull it down from FRED, it gives me an Excel date code rather than a date. So that is not really a text um, string that looks like that. It's actually a number that looks like that. And to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this to another sheet. So I'll do a copy, just a control C for copy. And then I'm going to go to a new sheet. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste special and I'm going to do paste values. This one, two, three button is to paste values. And notice all those cool dates went away. So we need to get those back. 
And we need to do it in a way that Gretel can understand. Um, these Excel date codes are kind of idiosyncratic to Excel, and no other program really knows what the heck it is. So we need to format it as a date. And it needs to be a text string, not a number, because if it looks like a number, then Excel is just going to make it kick back to this this number right here every time we do anything, and it'll be really, really, really um, frustrating. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a function called text, equal T-E-X-T, -E open parentheses. What text does is it takes a value, so right here we're going to go to A2, that date code, and then formats that value as a string given a certain format that you want it to do. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we want a four-year or a four-digit year code, one, two, three, four. So 2014 would be 2014, dash, month, month, so a two-digit month code, dash, day, day. And I'm going to enclose that whole string in double quotes and do an end parentheses to make sure that's done. But there's one problem with this. Excel is going to see that string and say, oh, this is a date, and convert it right back to this number. So we need to do something to keep Excel from doing that. And to do that, we're going to click a little apostrophe at the beginning. OK, it's kind of, I think it's kind of a dopey way to fix it, but it works. So, bing. And now, if I open this up, notice it gives me the year, month, day. And I'm going to double click and fill that completely down. Next. I want to change this from a formula to an actual string because I want to delete this column, this column A, and if I do that, then this will refer to something that doesn't exist and it'll just be bad. So I'm going to, while it's selected, I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to click copy, and then I'm going to, again, paste special, paste values, and now all those formulas are gone. And so I can go ahead and delete this, and bing, there you go. Next, I want to call this, this first column something, and I need to call it a special name. I need to tell Gretel that these are the observation labels. All right, so this observation comes from 1954, and that label tells Gretel that that observation comes from 1954. So I'm going to call it OBS, or OBS, for observations. Now, I've got this is all set up just right. The final step is I want to go to File, and I want to do a Save As. Because while Gretel can import um, Excel files and XLS files, both the old format of Excel files and the new format of Excel files, there's a few functions that are available if we save it as a comma-separated file, a CSV file, that aren't available if we in Excel. So we're going to go ahead and save it as a CSV file because it's just a little bit more robust way to do it. And I'm going to come here to my desktop and put it here on my desktop. I've already saved it once, so I'm just going to go ahead and say yes, replace. Now it's going to yell at me and it's going to say, oh, wait a minute, I can't do all the things you want me to do with this. I'm going to say, well, OK, that's all right. And then it's going to say, oh, wait a minute, are you really, really, really sure you want to save it as a CSV file? Say yes. Um, and there we go. You're done with the Excel file. Next, let's go ahead and pull up Gretel. So I will do that really quick. Here's our Gretel window. Notice our Gretel window is very, very Spartan, very, very um, sleek interface. There's not a lot to it, and that's by design. That makes it a little easier to kind of find your way around the GUI. At least I think it does. So we're next going to File, and Gretel's really, really smart. You don't have to tell it to import or anything like that. I can just click Open and User File. And now all I have to do is go to my desktop. And once I'm at my desktop folder, I'm going to come down here at this lower right-hand corner and tell it what kind of file I'm bringing in. So I want to bring in a CSV file. And it's this Fred F file, and I'm going to click Open. 
Okay, now we have output from opening. Now notice what's going on here. It goes through a whole bunch of things. It tells you how many columns, how many variables, how many non-blanks there were, and all this good stuff. And then it comes down here, and it's really, really smart. It says, well, wait a minute. The first row looks like this, and the last row looks like this. Hey, I think these are dates. And it's trying the date order year, 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 month, 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 day, day. And bing, boom. We have this. It says probably weekly data, so it's figured out that it's weekly data. And we see Gretel being really quite smart as long as we have these dates formatted properly coming out of Excel. And here's our series, Fed Funds. We can double click on that and you can see it's there. In the next videos, we'll look at summarizing the data and we'll look at um, importing or we'll look at doing plots and other such things. But for now, we'll talk just a little bit more about importing cross-section data. Cross-section data imports just exactly the same way as um, you would if it were regular, um, if it were a time series data. The only difference is you won't have dates. And when you do import it, it'll say it's importing undated data. Do you want to give it dates? Well, if you don't want to have any dates for it because it's cross-section, just say no. Okay, so I have one more thing to show you as far as importing data from Excel. And this really comes down to why we use the CSV files. This is a function that's available in CSV that is, to my knowledge, not available yet for importing from Excel. But that's okay because Excel outputs CSV files. Um, what I've done is I've taken our same Fed Funds data, and instead of converting these to dates, I've converted them to text strings by the month. So July, 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 August, 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 September, September, September. What I'm looking at is, well, maybe I'm interested to see how the Fed funds rate compares month over month over month over month. Is it different in July than it is in the other months kind of questions. Now, I'm not sure that has any real interest as far as uh, from a macroeconomic standpoint, but for bringing in the data, this was just a quick and dirty way to get you a series example that would have a label on here that's a string or a, or a text string. But we're not going to import this as a data label. What we're going to do is we're going to import this as a series, but a series that contains text strings. Now what that is essentially in Gretel would be called a discrete variable or a variable that takes on a finite set of numbers and in this case 12 or a finite set of values in this case 12 different values and we're going to import that as a text string so the first thing we're going to do is we have the text string here and we named it a variable just like this and we have our fed funds rate now we're gonna go file save as again and we're gonna call this fed funds and I'm gonna call this um, month alright Fed Funds Month, just to differentiate. And then I'm going to quick save. And of course, it's going to tell me, oh, I can't do that. And I'm going to say, yes, do it anyways. OK. And now we have this as a CSV file. So let's go back to Gretel. Now, I still have my previous data set open. But I'm going to go File, Open, Open User File. Then I'm going to go to my desktop. Um, I'm going to go to my desktop, then I'm going to go to CSV files, and there's my Fred Month file. I'll put that on. Now it says, opening a new data file will automatically close the current one. Any unsaved work will be lost. Okay, every time I open a new file, I end up closing the old data file. There's several reasons for that I don't want to go into, but it's very good practice that they do it this way. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click yes because I'm ready to lose the other stuff and brought it in. First of all, it says imported data have been interpreted as undated or cross-sectional data. At this point, our data is undated because we got rid of those dates. I know it's a time series, but we're going to pretend it's not for a minute or two and just say, okay, it's different observations over different, over different particular groupings. In this group, in case, the grouping's a month. But we've taken off the dates. So we're going to go ahead and say yes. Um, or we're going to say no, we don't want to give it a time series interpretation. We can look here and it says now we have two columns and two variables 
instead of just one. Um, the two variables are month and fed funds. And then we have one more window. We have one more window that tells us um, the mapping. So uh, Gretel is going to use a number to represent each one of these text strings. Now it's going to keep track of the strings too, but internally it's going to use a number because that's faster. And well, it's giving us the mapping of what those numbers are. So you don't really need to know that at this point, but it's there. So let me go ahead and close this and get back to our Gretel window and let's take a look. You can see month is in there and it has all these strings. Now we'll use this at a later point for some of the graphing that we can do. Okay, so that concludes importing data from Gretel.